talk about the drug thing. If you blend games, that will solve problems. Mm -hmm. We talk about Nigeria, we, we defend ourselves. We talk about South Africa, you defend yourself. I'm a clinical psychoanalyst. There is a system which I was discussing with one of the ladies that goes out to Alex, Soweto, to try and change the mindset of the young woman. The thing is that crime is institutionalized here. It's not about where you come from, which ethnicity you are, which country you come from. Now, I, I introduced something to her. I said that when you come, if you go to Alex, for instance, I've gone there, immediately after the school, the kids come back. Their parents, their moms, that's who they live with. You don't see the father. <coughs> have gone to work to earn a living to support these kids, which is appropriate. But what you see, you see a gathering of these kids in one place. And what do they do? They watch the elderly adult men who will smoke, who will do something on the back or whatever, they learn. Now I say to her, you don't need to fight the crowd at the same time. That's what we call you introduce. If this whole place is dirty, you start cleaning by cleaning one seat. From there, you clean the whole seat. When you capture some of these young ones, they start preaching to the others also. But I think this thing, this drug is bad for us. I am not going to stand here and tell you whether it is Nigeria that is selling, whether it is India that is selling, whether it is South Africa that. What I'm talking about is what solution do we have? Drug is a problem in Africa. It's not just in South Africa. If I stand here and tell you there's no drug in Nigeria, I am lying to you. In the last six months, uh, what do they call it again? Uh, they call it in Ibu, Ulumi, right? Yes. Yeah. Was sweeping the young adults in Igbo land. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, at the point, communities we are bringing them out to flog them to stop doing that. So it's not a South African problem. It's an African problem. So I want you to get that so that we don't start <laughs> sectionalizing these things because that is the greatest problem Africa have. The more we start working collectively as individuals to change the perspective in Africa, we'll start getting results. I don't look at you as a South African. I look at you as my black brother. I don't even ask you where you come from. I ask you your name. And that is how you start seeing Africa, then we'll have making progress. You talked talk about the exercise, the match. Yes, we're organizing one. We'll, we'll keep you updated with that. And what's that the last question? OK, let me come this to you. This is a separate question. The, in Nigeria, that's a grave problem. The women. I would like to you at this point in time if there's a collective effort now to fight to protect them especially in the northern part but the truth is that the resources are limited and they are still open to dangers so I won't paint what with you but the only thing I can tell you is that there's efforts being made to protect this women and kids. It's not if I start painting words and tell you that a lot has been done so far in that regard, I'm still lying to you. But we have to face reality as Africans. We have to face reality. Like I always say, we have to start from ourselves and start telling ourselves, I want to make a change. Then that change will start. Because when I tell you, uh, the best now that, hey, try and talk to these kids in your streets. I'm seeing them in the wrong fashion. She might talk to one. That's how change starts. That one will talk to one. It only takes a child to convince the whole class by saying, I don't want this. This is wrong. If you do it, I will report you. You will start seeing three or four will join. Before you know it, you have institutionalized something that is right within that environment. And that's the only way we can treat Africa. It's not about calling names of where, which country you come from. It doesn't help us in any way. Thank you.